Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, everyone. I am Dia from Birdie. We're so excited to have you with us today. Um, we are going to give everyone about five minutes um, to arrive um, because we do have a great number of you registered for this event. So um, we're just going to take about five minutes um, before we get started. Um, but we're really excited to have you with us today. Um, while we are waiting, it would be really great for us to know um, if you could use the chat function, um, if you could let us know if you, when was the last time um, you were inspected um, by the care inspectorate? And maybe if you could let us know, how did that go for you? Um, it would be also just if you have any comment on how have your interactions have been with the care inspectorate, feel free to chime in on the chat function. Um, you should be able to type um, into the chat function um, on the bottom. So let us know um, while we wait for a couple minutes for everyone to join us. Um, so let us know if, um, if you've been inspected recently um, or how your interactions have been um, with the care inspector. It'd be really cool for us to have an idea um, if you wouldn't mind. Um, but we're really excited um, to have you guys here with us today. Um, it would also be great. Um, okay, not inspected yet. Yeah, maybe can you let us know if you haven't been inspected? Maybe you're still waiting for your first inspection. Um, that would be interesting for us to know um, at what level um, you have any interactions with them. Okay, so no interactions yet, no inspection. Okay, um, seems to be a trend okay <laughs> no inspections um okay some some had in january um some had very recent um received five okay generally supportive okay interesting thank you so much for sharing um okay so we have a good mix some re more recent some still waiting do for an inspection, that makes sense. Um, yeah, seems like it's a very good mix. Um, and so we'll get started in about two more minutes. Um, so maybe if you can let us know in the chat as well, like what are you hoping to get out of the session today? Um, hopefully we can address um, all of your concerns today in the session. So um, just let us know. Um, what brought you here today? Assuming a lot of you haven't been inspected yet. So here to learn a bit about the current inspectorate in general. Um, but yeah, very excited to have you guys here with us today. Okay, interesting. Great, thank you so much for sharing. Um, yeah, lots of inspections, recent not so recent as well. Um, great. No, that's really good. Thank you guys so much for sharing. And um, maybe let us know if you're um, already using a digital system. doesn't have to be Birdie, um, but that'd be interesting to know um, what kind of system you're using um, in place um, so far. Um, great. Learning more about the care inspector at grade. Hope to, hope to be able to um, be educational as possible today. Um, yeah, understand changes has occurred, um, haven't been inspected yet. Great. So we'll get started in just another minute. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for sharing with us, um, in the comments, um, really great mix today. Um, so really hoping to address, um, issues around care inspectorate, um, and also we'll be um, talking a little bit about Birdie as well. Um, so I see there are comments around going live with us. So that's um, exciting to hear. Um, great. 
Um, so we'll get started now. Um, so again, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your very, very busy schedules um, to um, join us for this hour long session. My name is Dia again. Um, I manage all the events here at Birdie. Um, so we might have crossed paths before um, if you ever come to trade shows or any of our workshops. Um, but if it's a first time meeting, then welcome. Really Really glad to have you here with us today. Um, just a quick reminder, um, the session is being recorded, so you will be receiving a recording of the session. You will also be receiving the slide deck in your inbox, so be on the lookout uh, for that. Um, today we're going to be talking about the care inspector in Scotland um, first, and towards the end we will also be talking about how Birdie works and how it can maybe address some of those issues um, and how you can um, achieve excellent. Um, and at the end, we'll be taking some questions. So please use the Q&A function or the chat function um, to ask questions throughout. Um, you will not be able to speak um, to us directly. So please type in any questions that you have. Um, so we'll take some time at the end to answer those. Um, and then lastly, um, um, when you're exiting the webinar, please make sure to fill out the survey. It's really helpful for us to know um, if this session has been useful to you, if there is anything that we can improve upon in the future. We try to, you know, work with our partners um, to make sure that we provide as much value as possible in these sessions. So just let us know. Um, please fill out that survey. Great. Um, so without any further ado, let's get started. I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Lucy, um, who will be introducing herself. Um, so over to you. Hello. Um, can everyone hear me? Thank you. Great, I'm getting I'm getting some, some nods. Hi everyone. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. So yes, we are talking about the Care Inspector of Scotland. Um, so let me just share. So just to introduce myself so you know who I am and who's going to be talking. Um, I'm the content and community lead at Birdie. Um, so as Dia said, we'll say a little bit about Birdie towards the end of this session. The majority of it is on care inspectorate sort of best practices, how to meet their expectations. Um, but my role at Birdie has been to develop uh, all of our CQC, which is England's regulatory body, um, Care Inspectorate Wales and Care Inspectorate Scotland content. Um, this being one of them, uh, one of the kind of feature pieces that we're doing. So where did we get this information from is, is quite a key point to raise. So my reassurance to you is that um, all of the information that we're going to be sharing today has come either straight from Care Inspectorate Scotland themselves, um, has come from industry experts that we work with, has come from our partners, um, many of which are based in Scotland, uh, and which is which is amazing. Um, and also from events like this. So I don't know if you any of you have attended um, the Care Inspectorate Scotland in person workshop um, that we held um, earlier this year, I think, or, or, or potentially no, at the uh, towards the end of last year. But um, we had a great chance to meet with so many um, care providers in Scotland who gave us their insights uh, on the care inspectorate and together sort of workshop solutions to some common problems. So all of that information that we have, we've put into one place, which is this presentation today. So I hope that kind of what we're able to give you throughout the presentation is a overview of who they are. I'm sure many of you know who they are, but it's always good to kind of have a refresher. Um, then we're going to look at how to meet basic expectations. So key thing being, there's a lot of information that they're throwing at you. What are the core things to focus on to make sure that you just meet basic expectations every time? Then we're going to be looking at how you actually exceed their expectations, which is always the uh, the fun bit. So we'll be looking at how to actually go um, from very good to excellent uh, towards the end of this presentation. And then, yes, after that, we'll be having a quick look at Birdie's tools and how they can actually maybe help you go for that excellent as well. So let's kick off. What are Care Inspectorate Scotland? So 
as you're well aware, they are Scotland's national regulator for all things social care. So this includes um, domiciliary living and complex care providers. Now I've added that note because um, I think I saw in the questions there that there may be some people were using residential care or working kind of trusts. Um, so Birdie specifically um, build our technology and work with domiciliary living um, and complex care providers. So uh, if there's anyone who has a residential care home or anything on this call, I hope there will still be some useful information in here for you, but don't be alarmed if uh, I don't say very specific things related to that um, and instead lean more towards domiciliary care. So what do they do? The care inspectorate register care providers, they monitor, inspect and rate services. They take action to protect people who use services. So this can be um, legal action against uh, very, very badly performing businesses. And they also speak out on key health and social care issues. Um, this last point about speaking out on health and social care issues is something they're moving more towards. Um, so rather than just being a regulatory body, they're also looking to get more involved um, in, in the conversation. Why do they regulate home care? Um, so I've, from speaking to quite a few providers, um, there is often a sense of sort of, there's a lot of pencil pushing was the uh, phrase that I've heard. Um, that is understandable when you are just trying to do your best work um, and you feel that there may be a lot of confusing information, a lot of conflicting information, and you just wanna be able to carry on doing, doing the best job. So the one thing I want to reassure you on is that Care Inspector at Scotland also want that. Um, it can sometimes feel that regulators are working against us, um, but actually everything that they're putting in place is to create a basic standard of care delivery across Scotland. So that means that um, even though we think of it in terms of sort of the care that we're delivering, if we think of it that our loved ones will also get a basic standard of care delivery as standard, um, then that I find that quite a comforting thought. That is what they're trying to put in place. Essentially, it is not to punish care providers, but is to support those receiving care. Um, also by doing this, they help care recipients and family members make informed decisions about who is providing their care. So that is a very important point, which I think um, speaking like referring to my earlier comment by sort of regulating and inspecting and providing these ratings, it enables people who are seeking care for their loved one to make the right decision. Um, it is also a chance for you to showcase how brilliant you are at the work that you do. So rather than seeing it as a negative, um, you know, oh no, we're coming to be inspected. The vast majority of you, if you're able to just do the very best job you can, it's a chance for you to showcase that and to show how excellent you are. So how do they regulate home care? So I saw some people sharing their um, grades, uh, scores, which is very, very kind of you. Um, so they provide, ultimately provide home care businesses with a quality grade. So these go from unsatisfactory all the way through to excellent. So it's a six point scale. So how do they award this? It's following an inspection of your business. So these inspections are meant to happen sort of once a year or so, but um, obviously due to the knock on impacts of COVID, knock on impacts of sort of transition to more digital uh, tools, there has been some delays. Um, so I think, you know, I saw someone last inspected 2019 in there, that is becoming more and more common, um, but it doesn't mean that uh, you won't get inspected. So it's always good to be ready. So the actual inspection process, what that involves uh, is looking at these six questions here, um, notably the first five we'll look at and then we'll look at that final sixth one. So the very different thing about how the Care Inspector at Scotland uses these questions and inspects businesses is that before they come in to do the inspection, they would like you to do a self-assessment. So let's go into a little bit more detail about what that means. So before um, you'll generally get a notification that you're gonna be inspected about 10 days before the inspection. Um, and when that happens, you have access to all of these tools to do your own self-assessment. So the reason why they encourage uh, home care providers or any care body to do their self-assessment beforehand is not to kind of create more paperwork and create more bureaucracy, but is actually to make sure that kind of you are fully aware of what you're being inspected on and so you can spot and you can fix and you can tweak things beforehand. 
So generally what a lot of providers like to do is use the framework continuously sort of throughout the year to measure themselves against. Um, that is a brilliant idea because it means you're always aware of sort of the standards that you're meeting. If you find yourself in a position where you have to do a quick check beforehand to, to fix things, then this quality indicator framework is the first tool that you would use to self-inspect um, because it is the tool that the inspectors ultimately will use as well. So each of those questions that we saw on the previous page, they have um, at least one statement attached to them. So under key question one, we can see it's very, very small, but uh, how well do we support people's well-being? And the top statement is people experience compassion, dignity, and respect. So that statement is what you'll be measured on. So within these um, frame, and all of this is available on their website, by the way, within these key questions, you don't have the quality statement, and then you have a measure from good to very good to unsatisfactory to weak. So you can then judge yourself accordingly on each of those. Everything that I'm showing you, by the way, is downloadable, and I'm sure you've already downloaded it straight from Care Inspectorate Scotland's website. They have all of the tools for self-assessment and they have all the tools that the inspectors will use. So for the self-evaluation, um, they ask you to kind of use the framework you're given and look at it in three ways. So how are we doing? And again, you measure yourself based on those statements. How do you know? This relates to evidence, which um, will come on uh, later, which is incredibly important. And then the what are we going to do now? is essentially looking at all this information that you've gathered and then making it clear that you have a plan to act on it. That is ultimately what the inspectors are looking for, is that you're aware of it and you have a plan to address it. So the core assurances checklist, um, these are just a couple of useful resources. So as I said, this is a very, very light touch this initial introduction to, to the inspection process, because I'm sure all of you are aware of all of the resources you have available and, and how that works. Um, so there are two things that I want to point out. So this first thing is the core assurances checklist. Uh, so this is an actual, I almost think of it as a cheat sheet for this kind of thing. It is a literal checklist of all of the policies, procedures and actions your business should do to meet basic Care Inspectorate Scotland expect expectations. So this tool um, includes things that are literally like a registration certificate is on display and contains accurate information that reflects the service currently being delivered. If you can run through this tech checklist and literally tick things off, you're already well on your way to meeting basic um, expectations. The other thing is a toolkit. So they have um, a sort of more, even more in-depth version of this available on the website where they go into greater detail. And again, you can just use these two pieces along with the framework to tick things off as you go. So that's kind of who they are and how they inspect. It's a self-assessment and it's an inspection and they all use the same material. So if you're able to continuously use that material yourselves and get a really good grip on it, you'll be already in a really great place to meet expectations. However, what we are looking at today is not all of this information and all of this sort of um, documentation that you could potentially be doing, because it feels like a lot. So we're actually going to be looking at basic expectations and how to meet them from a even broader standpoint. There are two things, and this has come direct from um, Care Inspectorate Scotland Inspector that, that I spoke with. There are two things ultimately that your business needs to get right. So you have safety and you have leadership. If you can ensure that your business is as safe as possible, so that means policies and procedures and processes that relate to making things as safe as possible. And if you can ensure that your team have ultimate confidence in what you're doing, that feel like they have the knowledge to be able to do their job properly, and that you have a direction that your business is going in. If you focus on just safety and just leadership, you are already doing an excellent job and it makes it much, much easier to meet the rest of the expectations. So we're going to look a little bit closer at these two things. So by prioritizing safety, 
um, you support the, the two questions that you can see here, which is how well do we support people's well-being, and how well is our care planned? So this kind of is going to cover most of those quality statements under the um, under these key questions. How do you prioritize safety? Um, obviously, the key thing is look at all of your processes, make sure they're as safe as possible. But even that sounds too broad, so we're going to dive in and make it simple. Here is, because I love a checklist, tangible ways to ensure and demonstrate safety within your business. So the key thing is your policies. So at the top here, we have four policies that directly relate to safety. So up-to-date anti-abuse policy, safe working practices policy, medication dispensing policy, and a health and safety policy. Now, one of the things that we got asked um, in a workshop recently was, how do I know what to put into these policies? Do I have to write them myself for this business? Where can I get them from? So the Skills for Care website, um, which I'll list as a resource at the end of this presentation, this has all of these policies um, available as templates. So you can either take that and use it as is, or you can adapt it for your own business. The most important thing is that you have these policies available and that everyone is aware of them and that they are, I mean, on the next slide, you'll see all of the ways in which you can make sure people remain aware of them and they keep up to date. The other things that you need is proof of safeguarding training for the whole team. So um, obviously safeguarding training is mandatory for any care professional. Um, and good news, the Skills for Care website has links out to uh, safeguarding courses that you can offer your team. Um, so this is something which a lot of people uh, like to do in-house. Um, but ultimately, the, first, the most important thing is that anyone who joins your business or even anyone who's actually currently in your business must have up-to-date safeguarding training. Um, proof of personal safety plans for care recipients. Again, we'll look um, a little bit at this at the end of our presentation as we kind of look at the birdie element of things. But personal safety plan essentially means that any potential risks have been assessed and then you have ways of mitigating them. Um, finally, a clear, clear visit schedule, including a record of any unexpected extended or updated visits and why this happened. All of these things demonstrate that you are running a safe business. There are obviously many other things be, um, beside, and this is almost why I wish we were in a workshop situation where I could kind of talk to you and get, and get other things from the audience. But these were some of the things which have been pulled out as the main ways in which you can demonstrate and practice safety. Um, and they're also evidence that you can produce at inspection to evidence that safety. So it's not just saying we're safe. All of these things you'll notice are actual things that you can use and evidence. However, to kind of definitely make sure you're using it, you've got to show that you're actually using these policies and you're actually implementing them. Having a um, medication dispensing policy that hasn't been updated in five years, that's not safe. So I've taken the example of a complaints procedure here, but this can be applied to any of the policies you have for your business. Ultimately, it's knowledge and it's ultimately it's people being aware. So you can have a copy of it clearly available in the office, include a copy in a new team member welcome onboarding pack. If it's relevant, you can include a copy in a new client welcome and onboarding pack. Mainly have a log of anything raised, organized by topic and how it's been dealt with, and then have a log of internal team feedback as well, complete with sort of actions and improvements. So the key thing here is that you've got the policy, but you also show that it's alive. You show that people are aware of it. You show people have been able to feedback on it and you show that it may have evolved over time. The key, key rule of thumb is essentially someone needs to be able to look at the policy, a complete stranger and understand the situation, understand how it's evolved and understand how it is put into practice now. So that's kind of a brief look at safety uh, and some ways in which you can prioritize that in the business. Um, and as I said, some features uh, of Birdie also really, really help and go a long way to, to making that possible, um, which Louise will touch on uh, later in the call. Leadership. So interestingly, we had a survey recently um, where the thing that most partners were worried about uh, in their care business was leadership. Not that they were worried about their leaders, but they were really, really worried about how to demonstrate 
leadership. So obviously you have a direct key question here, which how good is our leadership and how good is our staff team? That's quite pointed. <laughs> That's very specifically about sort of how the business is run, how confident the team is in the leadership, um, how happy people are, how good your retention is, how motivated people are to do their job, whether they feel confident they're doing the best job. These are quite big, broad things to look at. So what we're going to do is, again, just touch on leadership, um, what that looks like, what good leadership looks like, and then how to achieve it. Um, it's such a shame that I have to kind of move quite quickly through this as we've only got an hour or so, because um, it's something I could talk about for forever. But let's just kind of get a high level view. And as Dia said, if you do have any questions on this at all, please use the Q&A function uh, or the chat box and we'll see if we can get them answered at the end. So here are some, again, tangible ways to demonstrate a well-led organization. A clear statement of values and purpose for the business. A lot of people, when they're setting up, especially a very small domiciliary care agency, this isn't necessarily something you consider. It's mainly focused around sort of, what's the name of it? Can I get it registered? Um, you know, can I do this all myself? Can I just get some kind of social media or website up? But actually, if you start from the very beginning of, why are we doing this? Who do we want to help? Why do we want to help them? You yourself get a good feel of why you're doing this. You have an understanding of why you're doing it, which is so important when things get tough to remember why, why it's happening. And also anyone who joins the company, they can be sort of recruited against that statement of values and purpose for the business. You can really see whether someone is motivated in the same way you are. You can see whether they have the same passion as you. You can see whether they are a good fit for the business. It's really important if you haven't done it already to sit down with your team and create this statement of values and this business purpose. It really helps build a foundation of a great culture. And that is amazing for retention and, and recruitment in general. So once you have sort of covered that, then obviously a staff handbook. This seems quite basic, but it's something when you are recruiting quickly, when you're trying to build up that um, core base, you need to have this sort of thing that you can constantly look at and rely on, which has training resources, which has company contact details, up-to-date gu guidance on software policy, literally anything where a stranger could come in and they can go, right, I've got a handle on this. I think I understand what's happening. It's a book that means that an individual doesn't have to sort of constantly be fielding questions. It just covers anything you might need to know right off the bat. Proof of regular audits across different areas of the business. So again, this is something uh, where Birdie is very useful uh, in terms of a tool, but it means that you're kind of aware of what's happening across the business. Nothing has been left to stagnate. Um, complaints haven't been left unanswered. Uh, medicines have alerts haven't been missed. Uh, health and safety checks are up to date. Just proof that you are regularly auditing, regularly updating, regularly keeping on top of things. Um, proof of responsive availability of the leadership team. So this is something which has come up quite a lot in that sort of as businesses get very busy, as people get under pressure, um, care professionals can start to feel quite isolated from their leadership. Obviously, the care management team are kind of di directly dealing day to day, but sometimes the bigger you get, the more people feel like they're out on their own in the field. So this proof of availability, this proof of communication, this proof of an open communication, that is a fantastic way to not just demonstrate leadership, but actually lead. Um, finally, a clear onboarding process. So this kind of speaks to the staff handbook, but it's even further than that. It's the idea of sort of, I've joined your company. I know exactly what my first month is going to look like. I haven't just turned up and it's kind of like, oh yeah, I think you're going to be shadowing a visit with this person. It's sort of, you're going to be shadowing these three visits. You're going to be doing these three trainings. You're going to have this orientation on the leadership. You're going to watch these five videos. A very clear onboarding process for new team members goes a long, long way to making sure that they stay with your company for longer um, and feel valued, which is very, very important in the um, care industry that people feel valued um, because it is ultimately, I believe, the most valuable career that there is. So say that we've got all these things, um, but then you realize that you don't have any of these things. <laughs> Here is again, a quick sort of way to actually look and spot the areas of weakness in your business. So you can then 
um, fix and update accordingly. So a lot of this also works with the self-assessment um, protocols. So this is just kind of pulling it out um, and, and taking a look at it in slightly closer detail. So evaluate what you're currently doing, honestly. Um, so that's obviously very, very difficult when everything is in a rush and you're just trying to service and you're just trying to get through the day. It's very, very important to take a step back and actually see where things are not quite working. Um, a great way of doing that is to seek feedback. So if you have something which has come up again and again, then it's something that needs to change. It isn't just someone's opinion. It is something which does need looking at and does need resolving. Feedback from your team and feedback from clients is an amazing way to kind of do an initial assessment. And then beyond that, obviously, you can look at things like missed visits. You can look at travel times. You can look at sort of um, income. You can look at outgoings, they, all those kind of things. It's worth doing a proper assessment of your business. Once you've done that, the key thing is to invest in staff training and development. So even though it may feel like, well, we just need to get through it or I just need to cut back. Investing in staff training and development means that your business will be a much healthier place for everyone to expand, grow, be motivated what they're doing. Encourage open communication. That means when someone has something to say, not just sort of going, oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's a really good point. It's actually going, thank you for that. I really appreciate that. Here's what we'll do based on that. It's encouraging people to speak up when they see something wrong. And it's also encouraging people to take accountability for their own things as well. Um, and that's a very, very important thing to, to have in place in a business. Setting clear expectations. So um, one thing that my manager did when I first joined Verdi, uh, which I really, really remember and appreciate to this day and, and do with anyone I'm managing is, they said, she said to me, here are my expectations for you. And this is that, you know, you will let me know if there is an issue or is a de there's a delay on something. You will be open and honest with me if you feel like I'm doing something wrong. You will let me know, you know, if you feel like you have too much on your, on your plate. And then she said, what are your expectations for me? And that kickstarted a very, very honest communication where I was like, I like to be left alone to do stuff. <laughs> you know, all of these things. So um, setting clear expectations, no matter who's joining, no matter what level of the business, goes a really long way to, again, fostering that respect and creating a really, really great um, working environment. Prioritizing quality, that comes from leadership. As soon as you start to let things slip, as soon as you start to go, this isn't an issue, this is a non-issue, don't worry about it, um, that will start to cause um, issues down the line. Cracks will start to show. And then finally, keep monitoring, keep evaluating, keep learning from the business. That is so key. Um, it is not a static thing. It is something which is constantly evolving and that's what makes it so exciting. It means that everywhere there's an opportunity to improve, tweak, make things better and to grow. And that is the attitude that sort of every good leader has um, is one who's going, right, how do we make this better? How do we optimize this? So yeah, that's leadership and safety. I have one final point on this, meeting expectations. Evidence is everything. There is this saying in health and social care that if it's not documented, it didn't happen. That is very, very true when it comes to inspections. So unfortunately, word of mouth will not cut it. You have to have records that are up to date, training up to date, and a way to share that information very, very quickly with the inspector when they ask for it. Um, so this is where uh, a tool, um, any kind of software management tool or care management tools that you may be using, digital tools that I'm referring to, will make this not even 10 times easier, 100 times easier than if you're trying to manage things on paper alone. So one thing I will say, and this isn't even Birdie specific, is that if you are currently using paper for any of your functions, any of your features, please, please, please look into having some technology take the weight off that. Look into having a system that can do that for you that can do large amounts of that for you do it safely and do it securely um, that will go a long way to not just improving your inspection results but also making your life and <laughs> everyone's lives much much easier so i'm going to oh there you go already covered it already covered it all right <laughs> so i'm going to move fairly quickly to this last one because i realize i'm a very slow speaker. So I'm going to sort of move through these and then hand over to Louise. So what we're going to look at here is um, going even deeper into that. So say that you've already got um, a great score. This has all come from our partners who have gone that extra level. Um, these are the things which they've told us have really made the difference for them. So 
Personalised care. Um, the phrase person-centred care is heard a lot. We're all very, very familiar with it. Um, and we understand that it's about taking into account um, an individual's preferences or needs when it comes to delivering their care. However, personalised care, they're often used interchangeably, but personalised care is different. It is about tailoring everything to their unique needs. It means very specific treatments and preventative measures measures to kind of make them feel, um, improve their well-being. And it can involve technology and other tools to really do that. So the way that, I think it's on this slide, the way that I kind of remember it is that person-centered care is the philosophy. It's the idea of this is a really good thing to do. Personalized care are the actions that you actually take to achieve that philosophy. So this is where I think the really, really strong people who do well at inspection, they're looking at personalized care, but actually what they're, they're looking at person-centered care, but what they're delivering is personalized care. So how do you do that? <laughs> it sounds, that sounds sort of like quite intense to tailor everything to an individual. So here are some examples. Um, so it's a medication management plan. We're all familiar with that. Um, but it's not just saying these are the medicines that they're taking. It's a plan that actually takes into account their medical history, any allergies they have, any potential interactions with other medications. Um, I actually saw one personalized medication plan that had sort of like how the client felt about certain medical interventions. Um, so for example, she was, she was very self-conscious about sort of like her throat area. And so within that plan was sort of like, if she's going to have any kind of um, uh, throat or invasive procedure, then she needs to be under general anesthetic. It will not happen if she's under local. So these kind of things are very, very specific and tailored to the person. Um, it's not just, here's the medication they take. Social engagement plans. So um, activities and events that the person enjoys. Uh, a really, really great example of this, again, is from one of our home care partners actually in the uh, UK, I think middle of England. My geography is very, very bad. Um, but they had a sort of marathon runner, ex-marathon runner um, that they were looking after. The guy was 92, um, but had this kind of idea that all he wanted to do was run one more marathon. I mean, he's not running a marathon at 92. I mean, he was running them at 85, so he's a very impressive guy, but they had this social engagement plan for him to be able to run one more marathon. And that involved sort of making sure that he was able to um, sit in a wheelchair. They were gonna wheelchair for a long enough period of time to be able to cope with it, making sure that he was sort of comfortable being able to sort of be in the open air for that long, making sure that he was okay with sort of like as many um, that family members were aware that he was doing it so they could be there to support along different legs of the marathon. They had this whole plan that eventually meant that this guy got to run another marathon. Um, and if that isn't personalized care, I don't know what it is. Um, so that is going above and beyond and it's all about um, outcomes we'll actually we'll look at after this. And then finally, end of life care is another example of how you can really personalize things. Um, it's not just sort of cremated ill or buried it's about sort of like the music they'd like it's the stories they'd love to be told about them it's the, the clothes they'd love to be wearing it's kind of really giving someone the dignity and respect of the life that they lived that is personalized care as opposed to person-centered care which is just the top level so um we do have more examples of this by the way in uh, you can see it says cqc handbook so um this is sort of one thing which we've been working at and looking at at Birdie. So um, it actually is kind of covers this particular area as well. So if you're looking into more sort of personalized care and how to achieve it, we do have materials on the website that will help with that. Second thing, so I said we'll touch on outcomes slightly. Outcomes, that is the greatest way. Um, so if you have personalized care combined with outcomes led care, that will get you from, um, sort of very good to excellent. So you can see here, the kind of copy says it is very easy to get stuck in day-to-day -day delivery of tasks. Um, and often if you're kind of using paper materials or, or sort of tools that don't allow you to kind of see how things build up into outcomes, it's very, very difficult to kind of keep your eye on the bigger picture. However, looking at how the little tasks and goals and things build up into big outcomes, doesn't just help the well-being of the person you're looking after, but actually helps the mental well-being of the person delivering care because you can see the impact that you've had. It's not just going in day after day and 
whatever, just sustaining someone. It is having a goal, it is working towards that goal and it is achieving it. So how do you leave? How do you do outcomes led care? Thorough initial assessment. Everything always starts with a thorough initial assessment. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, there are tools which make that much, much easier to do. Um, develop a care plan for basic needs. So this is where a lot of sort of the lower performing agencies stop is this is the care plan for basic needs in terms of like, you know, food, water, medicine, that's it. This is where you then attach goals uh, on top of that. So you can speak to the client themselves. You can also speak to the family members. And this is where the marathon came out, you know, from uh, from this this older, older gentleman saying, that's one thing I'd really like to do. That came from a conversation with him. Uh, yeah, you can see here involved clients in the decision making. Then you kind of have that big goal and you have all of the little tasks and goals that lead up to that. So it isn't just sort of run a marathon. It's, as I said, make sure they're comfortable sitting in a wheelchair, make sure they've got enough mobility to get to the wheelchair or stand up if they need to, make sure that family members are aware that this is happening. Little goals and how they build up to a big one. You can then monitor and evaluate how you're doing on those little goals. So if you know that sort of, um, let's call him John, the marathon runner had struggled with sort of sitting down or, or practicing that for, for that particular day, it isn't just a case of kind of like, oh, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter that he wasn't able to do that that day. It means that you have, no, we're going to sort of like actually take that into account. We're going to work out how we can fix this. We work out if we can adjust the plan. By having the outcome, it makes it so much easier to actually judge how you're doing and how well the care is being received. Use feedback. So if someone's saying, you know, oh, I think I don't want to do that anymore, or sort of like, I don't feel this is working, or I don't think this is going to get me there, you can use that feedback to adjust the little goals as well. Um, and then finally, train and support your staff. So it is um, quite overwhelming looking after people, especially when it comes to sort of uh, big goals. That's where having adequate training um, makes all of the difference, um, as well as having support available on hand. So that is where tools um, like Birdie can be particularly useful uh, in terms of making sure that if an alert is raised, they feel that they get support immediately. Um, things like medication management is much, much easier to achieve uh, so that they can spend more time focusing on the client and focusing on these really cool, big, like personalized goals. So um, I'm nearly towards the end of my uh, presentation. I just have a few more things that will sort of help in terms of the broader spectrum of understanding what the care inspector are looking for and how to achieve that. Connecting with others. So you're already doing that here which is um really really great so you've already gone out of your way to join um a webinar uh, we really really appreciate it as via said if you have any feedback on this or any suggestions on stuff you'd like to see in future fill out that survey at the end because we want to make sure that these are as valuable as possible for people who are taking the time out um but other ways in which you can kind of connect get different resources get an opinion um conferences and events uh professional organizations, so Home Care Association, that's a personal favorite of mine, they're really, really good. Um, they have so many resources available. Um, online groups, Facebook is fantastic uh, for sort of getting conversations um, and, and learning from others. Collaboration, we're all doing the same thing. <laughs> we, we all want um, people to have the best care possible. We all want people to live amazing lives as long as possible. Um, so why not work together on that? Um, many people are going through the same things that you're going through. Many people have the same questions that you have, and many people have answers for those questions as well. Um, so keep reaching out, keep collaborating with local providers. And then finally, engage with local authorities. So this doesn't just mean sort of local councils necessarily, but can also mean the sort of um, care inspectorate themselves. So any sort of body who is regulatory or local authority based, they are open for communication. It may not seem like it always, but um, they owe it to you to be able to communicate properly and to share information because you're out there delivering the hard work. Um, just because they are regulating doesn't mean that they shouldn't be supporting you to also do your best work. So feel free to reach out to them, to communicate with them and to provide feedback to them because ultimately they need to be as best as they can be as well. Um, these are some online resources. Again, we'll share the presentation with you um, after the end of the call. So all of these are, again, just some great free sites that have information around this. Um, so I'm sure you've looked at many of these already, but they just have some great resources available. 
I think <laughs> I think it is time for me to stop talking. Thank you all so much for um, listening. I'm going to hand over to my wonderful, wonderful colleague, Louise, um, to, to take on from this point. Thank you so much, Lucy. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Um, yes, so as Lucy said, my name is Louise and I work as a partnership manager here at Birdie which means I get to work alongside our lovely care partners, understanding their objectives and working together to deliver successful business outcomes, be that with their care or their growth, etc. And it's just amazing to be a part of that journey and helping them achieve and evidence the excellent care that they do every single day. All right. Next slide, please. So some of you saw in the chat, you know, are recently joining Birdie or your partners at Birdie. Um, but for those that are not familiar with Birdie, it's a simple desktop and mobile toolkit for managing and delivering excellent home care. So it's a single platform to manage your care management. So your care plans, your medications, etc., plus your rostering and finance to have that one source of truth, essentially, to managing your care and operations. Everything we do is built alongside our amazing care partners and the care community. So it's been amazing actually over you know, the years I've been with Birdie to see how our partners have helped shape Birdie basically based on their needs and their wants. Um, as you guys all know best what the problems are in your day-to-day -day runnings. Um, and we basically help to build that technology to solve some of those problems and serve the care communi community. Something that we are so passionate about is creating useful and practical resources and support um, for the care community. So things like the webinar today, we've got lots of eBooks, we do lots of workshops, et cetera. So from speaking to care providers, you know, day in and day out, we know how hard it is to find the time to surface useful information um, and to just basically find the time to continue learning. And we just strive to help create all of this content to help everyone to continue growing and find these things very, very easily. Okay, so a little bit more um, in detail about how we do help our partners um, with our great tools. Um, one of the areas that we know that every care provider is constantly reviewing is assessments and our partners carry out assessments on bird day. And we have designed this process with how well is care and support planned in mind, essentially. So you can take the assessments that are relevant for an individual, complete with a really high degree of detail without over or under assessing anyone, so that you're always giving them the, le the appropriate level um, of support, basically. Within these, you can clearly document people's personal preferences. So what Lucy was talking about earlier as well, um, in terms of getting that um, person-centered care and personalized care and the needs and goals and really tailor these towards them and make them as person-centered as possible to each individual and in no way generic. So that's one, one of the ways that Birdie can help, um, you know, with your evidencing as well. Bab, next slide, Lucy, please. Great, so be responsive. We've spoke about this quite a lot already, but um, your client's needs will change over time and you need to be able to make sure that you are reviewing on a regular basis how they are progressing. And one way that Birdie enables you to keep a sense check for, you know, example, have we kept our assessments up to date, um, which is what we're looking at today. So you can then set the parameters as to how often you would like to review these assessments and have a report to help guide you in easily identifying when these reviews are due, ensuring you are always in line and not falling behind with the individual's needs and can update quickly the care and support that is required for them, um, really kind of back into being, being responsive to what your client's needs and wants are. Next slide, please, Lucy. So um, another kind of, <laughs> I know it's difficult when you've got someone else presenting and I'm, next slide. Um, but so something we've spoke about a lot so far, Lucy spoke about a lot, is that whole kind of safety aspect and being as safe as possible. Everything starts with safety. 
um, creating a timeline of events around alerts raised and easily being able to filter by client or by the type of alert to spot any kind of you know, trends or patterns um, means that our care providers feel they can prioritise really, really easily and feel proactive in supporting people's well-being. And they've got the processes in place to be as safe as possible, but equally evidence this um, really, really clearly. Next slide, please. Um, so kind of continuing on, you know, the, the being responsive and acting quickly, um, you know, when resolving alerts as and when they reach you, this is something I hear a lot from our care providers, it's very difficult to, to see what's happening live, if it's not coming to you, you're essentially having to go out and, you know, collect that information. Um, and having that real time insight into anything that needs your attention quickly, so things like missed medications, late visits, incidents that are reported, this ensures that you are able to keep track of all of those alerts, how quickly you are responding to them and the actions that you're taking to resolve them as well. So that when it comes to proving that you are responding in a safe and timely manner, um, this helps build up that bank of evidence in basically. And then Birdie Analytics, which is our reporting tool. Uh, stay there, <laughs> Lucy. Uh, I like this bit. Um, but in Birdie Analytics, which is our reporting tool, it basically turns like every click and entry into the test, the desktop um, and the app into an insight. Um, so it's a really great way of showing, OK, you've got the alerts, you've dealt with them, but how long did that take you and how often are you resolving these promptly? Um, and in this slide, you can see that it's not a great example um, of resolving these as in reality, no one is zero percent at resolving um, uh, these alerts. But it allows you to see how many you are resolving within 24 hours and keep working towards improving that percentage and demonstrating that you are responsive and well led to what's happening in your care. Next slide, now, please, let's see. Um, yes, so something Lucy spoke about a lot as well is that really, um, and it's one of my favourite things I've got to say that we'll talk about today, is the client is at the centre of everything we all do here, um, is to be able to set those meaningful outcomes and easily track the progress that's made against them in birdie. So with this functionality, um, you're able to set really clear outcomes for your client, for example, maybe you know, gain three kilograms by this date, or be able to manage their own finances or improve their mobility and set that time frame that they aspire to achieve that outcome by. And then you've got the ability then to be able to review that on a daily, weekly, monthly basis um, and review whether they are progressing well against this or whether we're regressing against it or whether there's no change at all, right? Um, which sometimes happens. And you can document how you're supporting them in achieving that. Um, it's a really exciting feature that is in beta just now with Birdie. Just, um, so if you're already a partner um, of Birdie's at the moment, you can speak to your CSM team about this a bit more. Um, and it will just help our partners ensure that everything you do is anchored against these outcomes. And you can share with your team in the wider care circle um, down the line that, you know, we've had this many outcomes, we've had this amazing impact on this client's lives, instead of it being kind of time and task focused, which no one wants to do. Um, and it's just a great way of evidencing the support that you're giving to people's wellbeing. Next slide, please. I'm okay for time. I do need to speed up. <laughs> I do love a chat, so tell me to quicken up. Um, personalised care, again, you know, same kind of talk track of what the, the CIS are looking for. Everyone that works in care is here because they care about the outcomes for their clients um, and really tailoring that support to personalise it to the individual's likes, dislikes. You know, we all we all know how we like our cup of coffee or our tea made and it's about taking it that step further and basically ensuring that you're capturing that information to each individual and the care team have the tools to also be able to see this so keeping everyone informed and when the carers are using the birdie app out on their visits every single day it's about making it easy for them to capture these observations and photographs plus the families um, absolutely love seeing this on the family app as well and it just demonstrates that they are doing activities that are meaningful to the client you know going for a walk taking a photo of it etc and again helping you to build up that bank of evidence of what a caring team really looks like next slide please 
Yes, something, uh, you know, I work alongside our current partners, and this is always um, a really key theme for them, is that easily sourcing information um, and being easily file and pull information by category. This can be an alert. It may be interactions with a third party, like a nurse or a family member, whatever it may be, basically. But when you log these on Birdie, you can then actually group them by theme and tag them in the right category. And we hear well, I hear all the time, time and time again, how time consuming it can be to sift through pages and pages of data to find, you know, information on a certain topic like a social worker interaction. Um, whereas with Birdie, you can easily filter and search for this type of information by category and then surface that bank of evidence as well. Um, and it just helps you to be really responsive, work with the wider care circle much easier and just save a lot, a lot of time. I know this is the one thing from speaking to our current partners, they feel has been um, the biggest difference maker for them as well. Next slide, please. Growing your business. The one thing when you ask everyone, what would you like to achieve this year? <laughs> Um, but one really key thing, you know, that we help our partners with is to help understand, you know, patterns and trends over time. So that as a management and a leadership team, you can basically take appropriate action and improve where required. Um, and an example, you know, of this might be that, as in the picture, for example, in this slide, you know, Robin Care, they keep getting the same complaint that a certain team member keeps forgetting to take the bins out and that they, you know, are smelly and overflowing sometimes. Um, if you keep getting this complaint and can easily identify this trend and nothing changes, it's not backing into demonstrating excellent management and leadership or how good is our leadership. But if you get that complaint, you can easily show that you've taken action, action off the back of that complaint and now you can show that you no longer have like a trend of receiving that complaint, essentially, um, and that you've used a system to identify these patterns and take that appropriate action. Um, so it's just a great example of showing, you know, good leadership and that you're improving continuously and you've got the tools to be able to, to demonstrate that as well. Next slide, please. Um, yes, and how can we help? You know, to finish with today, and what everything kind of aforementioned so far is leading up to, you know, we are here to help you build the case study, these case studies, essentially. And we know, as we know, you know, in every kind of walk of life, but especially in care, and I think Lucy said this earlier as well, if it's not documented, it didn't happen. And it's really important you document things properly and timely um, on Birdie or any other system that you guys are using. But rather than being on bits of paper or notebooks or post-its, which I hear quite a lot, um, you know, you have this functionality with being able to tag on things like notes, alerts, actions, so that your team is dealing with all of the challenging situations that you guys face every single day in care. I've heard some, some crazy ones out there as well. Um, but you can give them the appropriate tag so that when the CIS do come to visit, you've then got this bank of evidence of where your team has gone above and beyond. And it will hopefully get you, you know, the recognition that you guys so deserve because, um, yeah, we're, we're all here for you. Um, and that's kind of where I'll, I will end it today. Um, you know, as, as we know that most care providers are doing the amazing um, so many amazing things for your team and your clients every single day and you know that's typically not where people show fall short um, it is just being able to evidence it essentially and this is hopefully where you know birdie or like I said another system can save you a lot of time a lot of stress and just make this really easy for you and um, so that when anyone comes and asks for something you're ready um, and yeah that's that's it for me. Um, thank you so so much for your time. I um, I hope you find this a really valuable session, and I think we've got a couple of minutes for some questions. So back over to maybe Lucy or Dia, whoever wants um, to. To me, yes. Uh, thank you so much, Lucy and Louise. Um, wonderful session. Um, we do have a couple of minutes left. Um, so um, if there are any other questions, please let us know. Um, one I see here, um, this is probably for you, Louise. Um, somebody is already using Birdie and they don't have access to their active outcome section or the complement section. Um, and somebody else also commented similarly, is this maybe a different package? 
Yeah, it potentially might just be not within the package that you're on, but it's definitely something to get in touch with support around, guys. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with the support chat on the hub um, or email, you know, your CSM to, um, manager as well, your customer success manager, um, who will be able to give you a bit more guidance on what you currently have and potentially what else um, is out there for you to have as well. Wonderful. Thank you, Louise. Um, I don't believe we have any other questions at this time. Um, so if there isn't anything else, um, then we'll be able to um, end on time, actually. Um, so thank you again, everyone, for joining us. Um, please make sure to fill out the survey as you exit the webinar, um, and you will be receiving these slides and recording of the session in your inbox. So please be on the lookout for that. Um, Thank you again so much for taking the time and have a great rest of your day. Bye, everyone.